Hey everyone, and welcome to Hey Chip Lane. I want to be an actor too. I'm Chip Lane, obviously. Today's a very special day, episode three, and I have my very first guest, Erin Burns. She's an actress and acting coach. She lives in Atlanta, and she's done uh, numerous films and TV shows. You can look her up on IMDb. But you can also look her up on bestactingworkshopever.com. It's also her uh, Facebook group and Instagram group. So you need to go there if you want to check out her online course, where she also teaches in Atlanta. So wherever you're listening to, you can find her because you can find her at bestactingworkshopever.com. I wanted to bring her on because she's not only an actress, but she's a coach, a teaching coach, and she's very successful at it. And we talked a lot about Meisner when I very first met her on the set of a commercial down in Tampa, Florida. Stick around for my interview with Aaron. I know that you will learn a lot. Thank you for joining us. I'm with Aaron Burns. Aaron Burns is an actress from Atlanta, Georgia. She also teaches and um, does not do Meisner anymore, but she did at one time. But she's been yeah. in a number of movies. Uh, welcome, Aaron. How are you? Super stoked to be here. <laughs> my very, very first guest on this podcast. Woo-hoo! Yeah, this the pressure's on. Oh yeah. my god. So you've done a number of pretty, pretty good movies like uh, The Allegiant, and uh, I know you did a really awesome scene um, with John C- or a movie with John Cusack, and uh, um, you've done a number of other things too up, up there. Is Atlanta's pretty happening for you, huh? It's happening. Yeah, that's for sure. Number one in the world for filming Georgia. So yeah. So, how did you get started in acting, if you don't mind? Let's start off with that question, a big one. Yeah, I was in the fourth grade, and my mom said, would you want to do this? And she brought me an ad from the local newspaper that was on auditions for The Sound of Music. Really? I was like, oh, hmm. So, yeah, so I started in musical theater in fifth grade, and it's kind of just been that way ever since, um, just doing a lot of theater and, and musicals and um went to college and got a uh, voice uh, minor in theater and a, uh, my major was in classical voice mm-hmm. and then moved to Nashville after I graduated from college and did I uh, was in a band for a while and did musical theater and did a little opera so you like a, like a rock band it was a Christian band okay. yeah it was a Christian rock band okay cool. awesome yeah right. yeah I was it was great. Awesome. Um, and then moved to New York and with pursuits of being on Broadway. And I guess the universe had some different ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And got into a, a two-year Meisner training program at the Maggie Flanagan Meisner School. Changed my life. Yeah. Realized I did not know what the hell I was doing when I was acting. Yeah. <laughs> I was acting. I wasn't living through anything. And... Um, yeah, just can't encourage other actors enough to, whether it's Meisner or, or some some sort of a foundation, get a foundation and train like a mad person, and you will have confidence. Yeah. You'll just have confidence you didn't know. But yeah, basically did that for a while, and then we had a business class our last semester at the studio, and they were talking about regional markets mm-hmm. and how like Portland, Oregon, New Orleans, Louisiana, all of these markets, and then they talked about Atlanta. And I'd never lived in Atlanta, but my my family lived about an hour south. And I thought, gosh, if I could maybe make some sort of headway in my career and not have to drag my laundry through three feet of snow, uh, <laughs> that might feel appealing. So moved down, moved down Atlanta and started teaching Meister classes, and that was a huge blessing. And I, I knew I wanted to teach. My dad's a teacher. I've, we got teachers all in the family, and I think teaching is the best thing ever on the planet. And um, yeah, I started doing that, and uh, I'm just I I have had some awesome opportunities, and I'm yeah I'm super grateful, super 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 grateful for the opportunities that I've had. Yeah, let's 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 sure. talk about training because um, I mean I, I really want this to be beneficial to both new actors and you know, people who may have been in for a long time and, and you know, been make this a uh, full-time job. But um, mm-hmm. training, I think, and, and you hit on something that's big with me, is training and um, yeah. not enough of it where I live in Savannah. Um, but, I mean, tell us, I mean, tell me about Meisner because, you know, we, we, I think you and I talked, you and I met on the set of a commercial in Tampa, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, 
you know, there's people who sort of take a little bit of Meisner and make a little weekend course out of it and call it a Meisner right. course, or they'll throw some Meisner into a course, which is not uncommon. I've, I mean, I've been with people who do that. But tell me more about Meisner and what that, um, what that entails. You know, I love that you talked about like a Meisner workshop because <laughs> – you know, I've been, I had, I have racked my brain for at least a year trying to figure out how could I make this into a weekend thing. Yeah. And I, I don't know that I, I could because Meisner's, it's a very progressive um, type of training. So what Sanford Meisner did diagnostically through these exercises that, that he created is he got the actor back to the very, very, very beginning where you have a clean slate, you're not thinking, and you start with this weird exercise called the repetition exercise. Mm -hmm. And it it seems like if you've never seen it done and you're you're watching, it's like this is so simple, this is so mundane. Like what is this? And it's truly about getting you not to think because there's no lines. All you like you don't have to memorize anything. All you have to do is literally listen. Mm -hmm. And repeat what the other person said in a truthful way, and it gets you back to the core, the foundation of what we do, and it's just listening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and if you've been, I have a hate, hate relationship with the classes that are like these actors, and I love actors. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say I hate any actor. Sure. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that if you, if the first thing you ever do as an actor is you're thrown into a class and given a script then what you're being told from the first day of your training is all you that, that, that memorizing someone else's lines is that you've been given is all we do as actors. Yeah. And it, it gets you into this place of, and, and I know cause like when I was teaching my journey, I, I worked with actors who came from other classes who were given a script day one. It's like, if you don't even know yourself, yeah. you don't even know how to truthfully listen how are you ever going to add someone else's words to, you know, to what you're doing? And, and so it's, it's just so, 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 so brilliant. So you start with this, this independent activity and repetition exercise, and it just grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. But one of the best parts about it is when you start to get into this independent activity exercise, what they're do, what Lizer's trying to do is to get you back to understanding the different human temperaments that we have because we grew up in a society that says, okay, don't have your full reaction. Yeah. Okay, okay, stifle your emotions. Let's go to therapy and let's talk about it, but <laughs> let's not express it in real life, right? Right. And there are reasons for that, right? right. If you express your murderous rage, you may end up in prison. <laughs> like if you know, if you express, you know, your your crazy, you may end up in a, in an institution. Like I get that, but when it comes to acting, you've got to have your full truthful response. And so he ends up having you work on being able to produce triumphant joy, murderous rage, mm -hmm. terror, and devastation quickly mm. and truthfully. Yeah. Now, you know, it's not sadness. It's devastation. Big difference. Right, right? right. And why is that? Well, because when you turn on TV or turn on a movie, if you're just watching people be sad, that's not entertaining. <laughs> right. Yeah, but right. when you're watching someone go through these extreme emotions in these extreme circumstances, it becomes entertainment. Yeah. No, I you know? yeah, I totally agree. Um, and I, I have not personally taken a Meisner, uh, you know, what six weeks workshop or six month workshop or whatever, but you know lots of other stuff I've I've taken has you know had a little bit of Meisner in there. Um, they haven't called it that, but you know I've, you know the whole tell me how you feel repetition thing and then mm -hmm. opening up to listening. And I mean I was in a I did an audition a tape audition the other day and I caught myself not listening to my uh, the reader, which is my partner Angelique. You you met her over the phone, but yeah, uh, just. <laughs> I, was just, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, I wasn't listening, sorry. Uh, and I just, you know, you have to listen to react because acting is basically reacting, you know, in most in most sense. Um, but I love 
that you're like, <laughs> I love a, I love a humble actor that can just go, oh crap, yeah, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> that, that was that I was totally acting. I yeah, was not yeah. listening. Like that's so great that you know to get to a point where you can go. Oh yeah, I, I I know what the difference feels in my body right. when I'm listening and when I'm not listening. Yeah, that's something. Frankly, I think that that's great. Yeah. So, um, some of your influences. Uh, tell me about some of the influences you have. As, you know, getting into acting and maybe when you, um, you know, as an as you became you know more, uh, you know, working more, maybe you had other influences and they changed and you started you know. Such a good question. <laughs> well, when I was a kiddo, I think it was like Julie Andrews, you know, oh, well, <laughs> Bernadette Peters, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Kristen Chenoweth, and, and all the Broadway um, folks, because that's that's really where my my passion was. But as as I've gotten cast in things and film and TV, I find that I either play the um, like the hardcore. I'm a I'm a small person in in real life. But I'm I can get real real feisty real real fast, <laughs> <laughs> and so and so but and so those are kind of the roles that I've seen that I play. Yeah, it's either like the real sweet girl next door or like the sweet girl next door that turns into a crazy psycho, like hardcore chick. Yeah, and that ha- kind of tends to run you know in 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 the character type acting thing as opposed to like the straight leading lady yeah. you know or leading dude and yeah. when i if i can name like my five like my four or five like top actresses that i see as these actresses that just kind of mold themselves into these different like supporting roles and and character work like tony collette yeah she's one of my favorites i think what she did in the united states of Terra was it was, I just, I have no words. Like, she was so amazing. I, have she played, like, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, yeah. She played, like, five or six different, she had multiple personality disorders. Okay. So every episode, she would literally be playing a totally different character. It was just, it was so amazing. Julia Louis-Dreyfus yeah. is one. Um, Melissa Leo is another. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh, I get probably named so many actresses but like but th- those are a few that come to mind that just they can just kind of do anything <laughs> i think yeah i, I think julie louis Dreyfus is one of those underrated um who can flip a dime you know um and be cray cray crazy <laughs> but then also yes. super duper funny you know yes oh yeah. my gosh all the way back to yeah. Saturday Night live I've, I've liked her yes yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So um, I I know that uh, I, when I saw your demo reel a while back, I know you had this awesome scene with um, Samuel L. Jackson and, and um, John Cusack. Uh, what was that like? Yeah, so that was a wild thing. That was my first like big thing out of the gate. It was a it was a supporting lead with uh, Sam Jackson and John Cusack in a yeah. Stephen King movie called Cell. Right. And. <clears throat> It, the whole the whole way it even happened, it I, like the story goes that I never auditioned for this casting director. They lost my tape. They <laughs> sent some girls to producers, and the producer said, "No, you know, let's start let's start the search over." Casting director went apparently this is how it happened. Went back in his computer, found another audition, and then I showed up at the callback, and I was the only girl there, and I was like, "Oh my god, oh oh." They just want to make sure that I'm professional and I'll show oh, up yeah. and I can take a direction. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh dang, I think I think I've got this. So it was real to not ever have worked with the big dogs, the A list, you yeah. know, if you want to call you know the actors. Sure. And that was an awesome thing. And I have mad respect for the casting director who has who never who didn't know me, who put me on set with him. I was like, oh wow, okay, let's not screw this up. Um, but it was awesome, and they were two of the most kind and generous actors I've ever met. Professional, um, I mean, just, yeah. just, just an absolute dream. The movie itself is um, that's part of my story now, my teaching story, uh-huh. and I try to help actors not get so wrapped up in one big film because. Sure. 
I ended up getting a publicist for that. I thought, this is going to skyrocket. This is going to blow my career up. It's a, it was Stephen King, for God's sake. Yeah, like, yeah. You've heard of him, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, and... He's written a couple long story books. Short, yeah. Right, he's written a couple <laughs> books. And so, you know, long story short, I, like put all these eggs in this basket. I thought, I'm going to get all the horror movie Comic-Cons. I'm going to make, this is going to blow up. I'm going to be like the horror movie girl. <laughs> and and they they had some issues with their distributors, and they kind of hopped around to different distribution channels. And then once it did come out, it only came to a few actual theaters. Mm. And then it went, it actually went straight to DVR and mm. Before it went to theaters, it was a weird. It was a weird release. No one had hardly heard of the movie. My public c- couldn't get me crap because she was having to explain to people what this movie even was, oh, and no. it devastated me. <laughs> oh, devastated no. me. Oh. And so I just, I just hope that that's like, like I still have the footage. It was an amazing experience, but like. If you're an actor and you're thinking this one big break is going to, and it can, that can happen. Yeah, yeah. And we see it happen sometimes. But for the most part, you have no control over anything That's, the yeah. second you leave that set. And you've got to learn to let it go. Yeah. And um, this is a business. The show business is a business. Mm. <laughs> and there's so much business techniques and business Acumens and aspects uh, that that go into not just acting, but you know, like you, you, you know, you you were obviously wanting to take care of your career, and you hired the publicist and all that. But this, you know, you other stuff happens behind the scenes, you know, and the movie doesn't do what you think it's going to do. So yeah, that's that's a crazy story, one that it's I'm crazy. very appreciative that you shared with our audience. <laughs> um, yeah, we I cast a film, a feature film, back in 2000. 12 or 13 it still hasn't even seen the light of day the the executive producers got into a lawsuit and it was directed by Joel David Moore from Avatar and uh, wow. Dodgeball and Danny Glover was in it and um, and um, oh gosh oh gosh anyway bunch of bunch of stars one guy was on um, that 70s show anyway um, and it still has not been out it's on the shelf somewhere so gosh oh it? that's sad yeah um, yeah, and then and then I cast a film, a horror film that's on Netflix right now, and they forgot to put my name in the credits. So I'm I cast the film. I was the casting director, but they they totally forgot to put my name on the credits. So I'm I'm uncredited. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's a crazy oh business we're in. Yeah. So yeah, so much. But that was that's awesome that you get to work with Samuel Jackson and uh, John Cusack and and have that experience with them. And is, how does that how did that? How, how or how did they make you better as an actor working with them? Do you think? Oh, they made me go. Okay, if if I ever get to that place mm-hmm. where I am number one or number two on the call sheet, I'm gonna <laughs> treat everybody. I'm gonna treat everybody like they treated me because they they made me feel like this wasn't my first big thing, That's and cool. that. I was really just part of the group. Yeah. Like at one point, Sam, you will, he's, we're not like buddies, so I'm not going to be like my buddy, Sam. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson, the great <laughs> actor. Um, we were rehearsing a scene and he's like, well, don't you think your character would say this here, Aaron? And I was like, yeah, yeah, she would. And he was getting us to improv and he goes, okay, everybody, she's got more words, more words, everybody. <laughs> Like, he was just joking around, and, yeah. and John was like, hey, yeah, if you want to, you know, just, you know, if you read the book, you know, if you, if you feel like, which I did, like, you can't show up to and create a movie that's based on a novel and not have read it or listened to the audiobook, like, yeah. actors, like, do right. your stuff, like, like do your, do your work, do you but work? Um, I was not going to show up not knowing that story, um, but he's like, yeah, you know, I know you, if you know the story, like, you know, feel free to like insert this here or like whatever your character would do. And I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. You know, gosh, just, I think just the word inclusive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's gosh. Awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and I love good stories like that just because, you know, you look at people on screen sometimes and you think, I wonder how approachable they really are in real life, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, of course, you know, Samuel L. Jackson's got this master class now out there with, uh, you know, master class online, you know, that's... Uh-huh. He seems like he'd be approachable, I guess, but you've gotten to, you can say firsthand that he actually is. Totally is. Totally yeah. is. Just the nicest, most humble guy. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell us about your acting class and what all you teach and how, they can, how people can find you. Yay. Awesome. So I appreciate you. Let me share this. So Absolutely. Self-plug. They, yeah. So I, I was like teaching Miser for a long time and like going through just some dark periods. You know, I shared one of them um, just in my life and career and started studying neuroplasticity. Hmm. Um, it's the scientific, it's just a fancy scientific name for the brain's ability to reverse engineer a belief system. Okay. So, you know, if you think, oh, this casting director's never going to call me in, or I'm never going to book this, or I'm never going to be a work, you know, I'm never going to be in the 2.5 whatever percent of actors that make their living, all these negative belief systems that we all have, like, as actors. You can literally change those. And I didn't know that. And I really, just to get, just to be really transparent, um, I know for me, I learn the best from teachers and mentors that are just real and mm-hmm. don't sugarcoat, act like they're got it all together. Uh, I was really struggling with some areas in some areas of my life. Um, I was dealing with anorexia, um, okay. just some alcohol dependency, and just just some real crap. And yeah. it had to do with my career as well. It had to do with some you know relationships in my life, and and. Um, when I started to study this and implement this into my life, I was like, holy crap, this stuff's life changing and it's helping my career as well. And I started to see, you know, some more callbacks and, and, and bookings happening. And so I started to trickle these ideas into the Meisner classes I was teaching mm-hmm. um, up at, at Drama Inc. in Orlando. Mm-hmm. And the actors were like going crazy. They were like, oh my God, like this, this stuff is real. And it started to change the way that they would do their work and do their scenes in class. I would like literally have them like say out loud, I'm going, I'm going to effing rock this right now. (laughs) Instead of getting up and apologizing, you you know how actors are, they're so self deprecating. What you say right before you get up in front of the camera or to do an audition or what you say right before your scene in class, what you say to yourself yeah. for the most part will determine how, what the outcome is. Right. It's, and just started doing more study into, into the power of, of the words that we speak, the thoughts that, that we think. I, I didn't grow up in this world and, 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 and having control over our thoughts. This was kind of a newer concept to me and so anyway i found that ultimately after curriculum there were holes in after curriculum Mm -hmm. and as much as i loved to teach the meister i do and i I love it so much Mm -hmm. but i felt like i might be able to offer something different and 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 what actors truly need for longevity yeah in their career and so I um, left that program um, to my friend Dustin Lewis um, up at Drama Inc. Um, in Atlanta. Um, so it's a great place to study Miser, um, and it's the same curriculum um, that that I used to teach too. And so, and it's traditional Miser. There's a couple different kinds of Miser. Anyway, yeah. So if that's what an actor needs, then then go there and and take that class. But um, what what I was able to do is to create an online program. Online is great because you can do it 24-7. Um, we actually have an app. Um, you can just do all the courses on your phone. It's, it's kind of crazy. Cool. That's cool. I didn't know it's that. So, yeah, it's so awesome. And so, and we've got actors literally internationally that are a part of this workshop now. And what I've done is taken three areas that I believe if an actor does not master, they will not survive in the industry. And that is mindset. That is finances. Mm-hmm. And that is the self tape audition. Yeah. Finances. You know, if, wow. Nice. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just I was uh, echoing you said finances, and that's pretty interesting that you put that in there. Yeah, I was super lucky. Um, have you, do you know who Dave Ramsey is? Yeah, yeah. 
I got super lucky when I moved to Nashville um, out of college. I ended up getting to work for him for a few years. Okay. Changed my financial life. Yeah. And I got very, very kindly, I got permission from the company to take some of the training that I had and tailor it just for actors. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah I heard a, a, another filmmaker on a different podcast I listen to when I work out. Um, he paid off his uh, film student debt in a year. It was like over sixty, seventy thousand dollars 70000 And he said, Gosh. the guy was asking him, how'd you do that? He goes, you ever heard of Dave Ramsey? <laughs> yes. So. Changed my, I, yeah, I had paid off all my student loans. Mm-hmm. I ended up, I did that two-year Meisner program in New York. It was expensive. I was able to pay cash for it because I understood I just understood budgeting and yeah. that it's not the B word. It's actually, it's actually a really, a really good thing. Yeah. But anyway, so I felt like when I got my financial life in order, my energy changed when I was auditioning. Cause I was like, Oh, this is a national commercial. This could change my financial life. And I was like, well, it could, but I've, I've, I've got control of that. I've, I've, I'm in, a, I'm in an okay place with that. I'm not, I don't know, not know where my rent's coming from next month. And so many actors live that way. Yeah. So, and obviously mindset, we talked a little bit about that, but then with self taping, there are, and you, and you know, you've seen them, you've sat there and watched them as a yeah. casting director. There are actors that will pay 50 to a hundred dollars per audition to go to a super fancy taping service. And that stuff adds up. Yeah. And I know actors that literally cannot afford that and are putting that on a credit card. They yeah. are paying to audition. Yep. And I'm like, we, we've got to get control of this. We've got there, you know, there's got to be some training out there for actors. Like, let me help you with the technical stuff. Let me yeah. show you how you can do a phenomenal audition on your freaking iPhone. <laughs> like what, there's just so many, there are so many ways to have a, a home studio for a, a tenth of the cost. Oh yeah. Of, you know, and, and it's things like that, and, and it's, it's building a community of actors that, like, after we do um, a little bit of, like, technical critique, I open it up to the rest of, of the self-tape class and say, like, what do you, what encouraging, uplifting words you have for Julie today? Mm-hmm. And we, you, you get feedback. That's cool. You get really kind and encouraging. I, I really don't allow the negativity. It's just yeah, yeah. if you have something kind and encouraging. And I think that's important, too, because... I literally know agents who are saying, I'm not asking for feedback anymore. We don't have time for it. The casting directors don't have time for it. Yeah. If you're getting auditions, that's your feedback, you know, and I'm like, Oh my God, no one's getting feedback. Like, like we just, we've got to stop sending our tapes into the abyss, not having a clue. If it even looks good. Yeah. You know, let alone if the performance is good. So those are the three mindset, money and self tape are the three areas that we work on in in the workshop and it's called (laughs) it's very humble so stand by it's called best acting workshop ever.com best (laughs) acting workshop (laughs) ever.com and on instagram i'm on instagram every single day either teaching or uplifting or sharing something to to help you with your with your acting career and it's all every single handle best acting workshop ever best acting workshop ever on instagram or uh, Facebook, we have a Facebook community group. Okay. But it's really, like, I know that that might sound like a silly name. One, it's easy to remember, yeah. but two, I do want it to be that for an actor. <laughs> I want it to be the best acting workshop ever because it, it's, it's going to teach, my whole, like, handle is I'm going to teach you the things you're never going to learn in acting class. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually looking that up right now on Facebook, best, act, best acting. You know, it's, it's funny you say that, but, you know, why not be humble? But, you know, I uh, when I made my demo reel and put it up uh, early this year, 2019, I called it on, on YouTube, it's best damn uh, film acting demo reel ever. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> and you're probably going to get a lot more views that way, you know. Yeah, that's, that's why I did that. <laughs> I figured, you know. So, all right, the support group. There it is. Okay, found it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And we're actually doing an After Life 2020 challenge in January. I'm going to challenge actors to look really deeply into their mindset, money, and their in their self tape auditions for a week. And then if you find that you want to go deeper, and this is a community that you want to be a part of, then I'll invite you to join the online workshop. 
Sweet. Well, this will this this will come out, and uh, they will be able to do that then, and hopefully, if they would like to do that, they will find you at the best acting workshop ever. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any um, quick advice you might give to uh, a new actor who might be listening to this? Ooh, a new actor. Yeah. Yes. Have something else that you love in addition to acting. And that's going to go against what most coaches are going to tell you. My coach told me early on, you have to sacrifice everything to be a first-rate actor. But what I found is when you live a full life and you have relationships, I find the parents that I work with are some of the best and most grounded actors in my community because they have a full life, they have family, they have relationships, they have something that's bigger than acting. Mm -hmm. And when acting, it is so easy to think that, oh, when I just book that first co-star, when I just get that first movie, yeah, I, 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 I've worked with these famous actors and, and, and you know, we've both been on TV and in, 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 in like these amazing epic feature films, but I'm still the same person. Yeah. It didn't, it gave me a wonderful opportunity that I'm wildly grateful for and some amazing footage for my demo reel. Yeah. But I am still the same person. Yeah. And when you go home, you're, you're, you're treated so weirdly as an actor. You're like, you know, you get your hair done for you. You get, you get your food brought to your trailer. You get, <laughs> you get, you're, you're, you're treated. It's weird. Yeah. You're treated like a king. And then you go back to your dog sitting job. Or you go back to waiting tables or whatever. Like it, it, you've just you've got to have as much joy in your everyday life as you get out of acting. And if those two things are not aligned, I believe that the core of my actor coaching being that you won't last. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and it it, it, it it amazes me that when you hear tales of you know actors you know who have made it and who are you know big name stars or whatever, and they just they treat people you know. Like, you know, they're not worthy. So, yeah, I like that. And that, you know what, Aaron, that's, that's, I think that's advice for everybody. It's like the Bible says, you know, treat everybody like you want to be treated, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Yeah. And love yourself as yourself. Yeah. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's true. So, never, uh, never said that before. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you joining us today and being a part of this, uh, Especially, you know, what a way to kick off my first guest, uh, Aaron Burns. What a, what a way to do that, you know, with you. So you've had a, a lot of nuggets out there, not only for beginning actors, but also for, um, you know, uh, actors who have maybe been around the block several times and are, are lost right now. So I appreciate uh -huh. your time today and all your information, all your wonderful nuggets and pearls. Anything else you might want to share with us, or? No, I just feel really blessed to be a part of this, and I was <laughs> I was really super honored when you reached out. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I um, I was like, let's 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 start this off with someone who's you know who's not only an actor but a teacher because you you, you have a lot to offer and I, I I love the fact that you have that program and the app. I didn't know about the app and I, as soon as I looked up the actor support group on Facebook, I was like, oh, I'm already a member. Crap, I need to go over there more often. <laughs> so there, <laughs> there's some honesty for you. Ah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, cool. Um, and so we can find you at. Yeah. Best acting workshop ever. I want to, if, if you go to Instagram first, that's where you're going to get the most value is best acting workshop ever. I'm on there every single day. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Aaron. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I want to thank Aaron Burns once again for sharing all that great information on classes and acting with us. You can find Aaron at best acting workshop ever online and on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook at Chip Lane or IMDb on Chip Lane. You can find Erin Burns there too on IMDb. Go have a look at see what some of the stuff she's done. Also, you can find me at FirstCityFilms.com. Please find our feature film, Untouched, at Amazon, iTunes, free on Tubi and Voodoo and other places. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Slancha. Me, I know who I am.